Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be making a start, I guess, on my November 2019 reading wrap-up. So I've got just the one book for you today, and that is The Complete Discworld Atlas by Terry Pratchett. And what's cool about this is it does come with this, like, fold-out map of the Discworld as well. I'm not going to open it all up for you guys, because I can never get it back away again. But on top of that, it also is kind of like a reference book, so you can go through and look at all the different countries, so... Uh, for example, where are we here? We're in Hawandaland at the moment. So you've got like the map of it there. Uh, you get to know like the people, the culture, what the currencies they use, who the ruler is, what the religion is. Lots of like beautiful illustrations and stuff. And it's just a way to get to know the disc world a bit better, I guess. I think most people, you, you could you could kind of have this on your shelf as you're reading the novels and use it as a reference each time you go to a new place. But for me, I just read it cover to cover because I'm a bit like that. I'm a completionist and Pratchett is my most read author and I hadn't read this one so I thought I should probably get round to it. So I did. So yeah. Uh, 4 out of 5? No, 3.75 out of 5 for this one. Okay, I've got another book for you guys and that is Thrilling Cities by Ian Fleming. This is non-fiction travel writing. Basically Fleming was the author of the James Bond books. He also actually wrote Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And in this one, this is basically some journalism he did on behalf of the Sunday Times. They sort of paid to send him around the world. So we've got about 13 different cities here. We've got Hong Kong, Macau, Tokyo, Honolulu, LA and Las Vegas, Chicago, New York, Hamburg, Berlin, Vienna, Geneva, Maples and Monte Carlo. Now, what's interesting about this is it reminded me of something that Bill Bryson wrote in his book, Down Under, where he basically said that one of the major points of traveling in the modern world is to see things before they're gone. And that comes across a lot in this because this world has kind of gone uh, it's also because I mean it's about 60 odd years old and every now and then he, he says something that's a little bit questionable in you know the 2019 politically correct era I suppose but yeah it was interesting to read and for me I wanted to read this because I've read all of Fleming's other stuff so I wanted to like tick off every book that he wrote I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 it was pretty good for what it was you're probably not going to be interested in it unless you like travel writing or James Bond but if you like either of those two things, you're probably going to like it. So yeah, it was right. Okay, guys, just the one book to wrap you up with. Okay, guys, just the one book to wrap up today. And this is The Mystery of Three Quarters by Sophie Hanna. So this is a new Agatha Christie Hercule Poirot novel. It's done with uh, the approval of the Poirot estate. And Hannah has actually written quite a few books of her own and won various awards and all that kind of stuff. So she's no stranger to it, really. And the plot behind this one is that four different people all receive a letter that claims to be from Hercule Poirot, accusing them of murdering somebody called Barnabas Pandy. And so these people then confront Poirot and he protests his innocence. They don't necessarily believe him. And actually, then we end up this with this kind of funny situation where... They've been falsely accused, but then they then falsely accuse Poirot of, you know, of, of sending them when when he didn't. So that was quite interesting. Uh, Hannah does write Poirot a little bit differently. I know she was a lot sort of nicer to him in a way because I think Christie was, you know, she did always kind of showed his flaws as well. Um, and so he didn't come off as like too pompous or anything like that in this one. And the other thing I noticed was that uh, that he used, he spoke in French a lot more often than he does in the original Agatha Christie books but other than that I mean I did still really enjoy this it's a well written murder mystery it would have st stood up by itself if it hadn't been a Poirot novel and so uh, yeah because of that I gave it a 4 out of 5 and I think I'm also going to check out some more of Sophie Hannah's books in the future Hello I've just got the one book to update you on today and I've done a full review of this as well which I'll link to below so I couldn't really be bothered to set up the sign and the lighting and stuff. But yeah, this is Dreamcatcher by Stephen King. It's basically an alien novel. It's kind of reminiscent of the Tommyknockers, which may be a good thing, maybe a bad thing, I don't know. Like, I like the Tommyknockers, and I also enjoyed this one. But I guess if you didn't like the Tommyknockers, maybe you won't enjoy this one. It's basically small, sort of small town vibes. Um, ties in with Derry in Maine. It follows this kind of group of four friends who've been friends since they were kids. And they kind of, each year they go on this hunting trip. And then one year, while they're having their hunting trip, uh, something something happens basically. This like alien virus comes out. It's called the virus, and um, yeah, it like spreads from person to person. It has all kinds of effects. Like gives people like telepathy. But also you get these like alien style things where like someone's just sitting there and suddenly this alien is like. <laughs> Sorry, did I alarm you, Biggie? So um, yeah, no, it was good. I gave it a four out of five. 
Okay, I've got two more books to update you on. So the first here is uh, Dawn by Eli Weisel. So this is uh, a novel. Weisel's actually known... This is like book two in his Night trilogy. So Night is his non-fiction account of his experience during the Holocaust. This is a novel set after the, after the Second World War, um, set in Israel and basically follows like some um, freedom fighters, you know, fighting against the British, basically. And it follows particularly this one young man whose duty it is, essentially, to to do like a revenge killing so basically the british are about to execute an israeli so the israelis capture a british captain and our main character is the guy who has to assassinate this captain or you know kill him in the morning hey biggie so uh, i buddy read this with alex black i also did a full review of it which i will link to below in general i thought it was really well written visel's actually got about 40 different books in total and he does feel like an experienced writer it did a great job of asking a lot of questions in here and there were also just some lines in particular that i thought were really beautiful and just a few ideas you know the idea of death being all eyes and that kind of stuff so yeah overall i'd probably give this like a 3.75 out of 5 it was pretty good and i am eventually going to read day as well which is the third and final book in the trilogy so there's that and then here we just have Cezanne by pocket painters i mean it's published by i've looked at this about five times pavilion books limited so i've looked at that loads of times and i still don't remember it on my bookcase it's just the author is effectively going to be pocket painters but yeah it's just a short biography of uh, Cezanne and uh you know information about his different paintings his different styles who he studied under and then the 20 of his paintings are reproduced in here as well so i just picked this up really just because he's a french artist and i'm trying to learn more about france and french culture really so um yeah it was good for what it was i gave it a 3.5 out of 5 it's nothing amazing but i mean if you're into Cezanne and you spot this lying around definitely pick it up I, I got it from a charity shop so i paid like 50p for it or something and uh i'm, I'm glad i grabbed it Hey guys, slightly sick day in here today, and I have one more book to talk about, which is Catching Fire, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. So this is the second book in the trilogy, and I think most people are kind of familiar with the idea now. Basically, it's a sort of dystopian novel in which kids from the different districts have to be sort of sacrificed for this annual battle royale, basically. Now, I didn't read these when they were popular because I'd read Battle Royale by Kushan Takemi around about that time. And I don't know, I thought that it was going to be a Battle Royale ripoff, but then I saw the movies recently and I read the first book and did enjoy it. And they do definitely stand out on their own. I think Collins isn't necessarily the best writer in the world, but she's really good with her ideas and how she kind of executes on those ideas. So it's not necessarily going to win any awards for high literature, but for entertainment value, definitely worth reading. I think it's like the forerunner of a lot of YA series out there as well. It wasn't quite as good as the first book, but I did still enjoy reading it. And all in all, I gave this one about a 3.75 out of 5. And I will list a link below in the description where you can see the full review of this to see some more of my thoughts. Hello, still slightly sick, but I'm slowly getting better. Today, I just wanted to give you a quick update on The Hunger Games Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. This is the third and final book in The Hunger Games trilogy. I actually thought the third mo movies, it was actually the third and fourth movie, because they did that thing where they split it into two. I thought they were the weakest, but actually in the books, I think maybe the second book might have been the weakest, although there were moments in this, particularly towards the end when I started zoning out a little bit. Overall, though, it was still pretty good. Uh, like the second book, it was a 3.75 out of 5 for me, and uh, yeah, the first book was by far the best, I think, but overall, they definitely all three worth reading, so read them if, if you haven't already. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I've just finished reading Aliens by Alan Dean Foster. This is the novelization based on the movie. I think it was, was it James Cameron who wrote the movie? Is that, is that dumb? I'm sure it was James Cameron. Is it dumb that I'm now asking whether it was James Cameron? It was James Cameron. It's okay. I'm going to read the blurb here. Uh, Only Ripley and Mr. Jones escaped the alien horror on the spaceship Nostromo, but rescued years later from their hypersleep aboard the lifecraft Narcissus, Ripley's tales of terror are doubted. Her warnings of the danger lying dormant on the planet Acheron go unheeded. When all communications from the planet's settlement are suddenly cut off, Ripley fears the worst. Persuaded against her will, she joins the crack force of space marines dispatched to investigate the eerie silence. A silence soon to be shattered forever. What they find on Acheron is beyond their darkest dreams. So if you've seen the movie, it's pretty similar to the movie. Very well written. Alan Dean Foster's like a great writer. And even back in the day when he was writing this, you know, he was doing great. He's now actually been writing the novelizations for the recent Star Wars movies as well. So he's doing pretty well. He's also Todd the Librarian's favorite author. Um, oh, so, well, he wrote Todd the Librarian's favorite book, sorry. 
But yeah, this is like really quite visceral, I would say. Like, some of the different scenes, you can almost smell like the smell of the acid of the alien's blood burning through the metal floors and stuff like that. And like, there was one line right at the end where they see some aliens and he said like, something like, Dante in his wildest nightmares could have never foreseen this horror, nor Poe in his most dramatic stupor or something. I can't remember what it was. It was a great line though. All in all, I gave it a 3.75 out of 5. It was pretty good. And I think that Alan Dean Foster did a, no a novelization of the third Alien movie as well. So if he did, I'm going to read that. And I'm also going to re-watch Aliens with French subtitles and see what I think. So yeah. Oh, and there's a full review of this as well, which if it's out to, I will link to it below. So, yeah. Okay, I have three final books to update you on. So first off, we have High Rise by J.G. Ballard. So I picked this up because my other half's got a copy of it. She got a copy of it for her birthday from her housemate, actually. So I was talking to him about it. Um, this has been turned into a movie, so he's seen the movie but not read the book. But yeah, I read the introduction. The introduction is by Ned Bowman. And it just sounded so fascinating that I had to get it. So I got a copy and read it in the space of about 24 hours. And it was excellent. It was like a 4.25 out of 5, maybe. It's kind of... I guess you would call it like a... Almost like a dystopian, absurdist novel. Where, like... Basically, it's all set inside this massive high-rise apartment. 2,000 people live there. It's got things like swimming pools and supermarkets there. And it kind of becomes its own little ecosystem. And you've got, like, your lower class at the bottom, mostly parents with children. And then you've got a middle class taking up the middle 75%. And then right at the very top, the richest people live. And basically, they wage an actual class war. And there are, like, parties going from floor to floor, uh, attacking each other and stuff. Very strange book, but... um. I'm really glad I read it, and I, it's made me want to read more Ballard, because this, this is my first ever JG Ballard. So yeah, pretty good. And then we have just these two tiny little ones. Uh, these are from the Ladybird Tales box set. They're both by Vera Southgate. So first up we have Beauty and the Beast, and obviously everyone knows the story of Beauty and the Beast. I keep saying every time I talk about it, but I want to read La Bella La Bette at some point, which is the French original of it. Uh, so yeah, these are all retold by Vera Southgate from like the 1960s, and they are like the original Ladybird tales. I think the uh, illustrations and stuff are updated, but they're still just very beautiful. And yeah, this was a four out of five for me. It's you know, it's it's Beauty and the Beast. You can't go wrong with it, can you? And then we have Chicken Licken, which wasn't quite as good. Uh, this is I think it's called like a cyclical tale, where basically you know a duck goes, a chicken goes out, and then it gets a duck, and then it gets a bird or whatever, and you. All these animals all join the quest to go and tell the king that the sky is falling down. And then the fox is like, oh, I know where the king is. I'll take you to him. And he just takes him to the fox den and they eat him. All the animals. And then they eat all the animals. So, yeah, kind of a bit of a harsh harsh lesson for children to learn there. But yeah, the best thing about this was actually at the end. There's a little essay at the end of each of these books where they talk about, you know, the meaning behind the meaning, I guess. And yeah. For me, that was probably the best the best part of this. But overall, 3.5 out of 5, it was all right. And it's good to read this one because I wasn't familiar with it, where I, whereas I was with Beauty and the Beast, you know? So there we have it. As always, thanks a lot for watching. These have been all the books that I read in November. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.